Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. This Sunday I was sitting in church and I began to consider what it means for me to worship, what it means for you to worship, what it means for us to worship corporately. How do we engage the Lord of hosts, the King of Kings, the one who came to save us from ourselves, from our sin? And that brings us to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13 says this, Through him then let us continue to offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips that gives thanks to his name. And the reason I find this particular passage so powerful is very often I am satisfied enough that I've received salvation, that I'm attempting to walk in the spirit, and I don't feel like I need to be offering praise from my mouth. And so that's kind of the first question is when was the last time you offered a praise to God, not in a worship setting, not when you're around a bunch of believers, but around whoever it is you come into contact with with your daily life, where you praise God for the amazing things he's done in our life. According to Hebrews, we're to be doing that constantly. He goes on, and do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifice, God is pleased. I want you to notice something. Here it says that our continual praise, our continual um, doing of good, and sharing that thing that God is doing in your life is a sacrifice you are making for him. So often we think of sacrifice only as monetary giving or perhaps giving of your time, uh, volunteering in your local community or in your local fellowship. But here we are pointed to the fact that our giving of praise verbally with our mouth is part of that sacrifice, a thing that you can constantly be giving back to the Father for all the grace he's bestowed upon us. This all sounds great, and I feel like I could just preach this and preach it, but it takes a very interesting turn at verse 17. He's laid out the idea that we need to be worshiping and be constantly worshiping. Then he turns to verse 17, he says, obey your leaders, submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give account. I want to pause there. I know it's the middle of the verse. We'll get to the end in a second. What I find interesting here is that every person I've ever met has a leader in their life, a spiritual leader, um, perhaps a leader at work, um, an elected leader. Here we are talking about spiritual praise. And so I'm going to focus a little bit on our church leaders. Oftentimes a leader in the fellowship that you attend or the Bible study you attend or the home group or the small group might have a different idea of what works worship or what teaching or what fellowship looks like here we're asked to actually submit to them and the reason is not because they're perfect or they're better than you or I it's because um, it is their job to watch over our souls and they are going to give account for all those choices they make good or bad now he finishes up the second half of this verse and it says let them do this with joy and not with grief for this would be unprofitable for you. Notice not unprofitable for them, unprofitable for you. So if you have a leader in your local church, your local fellowship, your local Bible study that is doing things that aren't exactly the way you would go about them, it's important not only to follow them because they're going to have to give account for that leadership, but also not forcing them to do it with grief. So they should be able to perform this sacrifice they're doing, this leadership, with joy. And that is a profit for you, and that is a profit for me. I come out ahead when I support those that God has put above me and let them serve with joy and not with grief. And that I know what you're thinking. That's really easy for me to say. It's harder uh, to actually do it when you're just as passionate about the faith as your leaders. But I want to encourage you this week, do all you can to lift up the Father with praises of the mouth and also the leaders around you. They really are attempting to guard your soul and to guard my soul, and they should be able to do that with joy. If you're really struggling with this, if there's leadership in your fellowship and you would like to kind of air your grievances to a third party that doesn't know anything about it or doesn't have a horse in the race, if you will, you can leave a comment down below. I would love to engage with you that way. Well, I hope this passage has been as encouraging for you as it has been for me. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Comment down below and don't forget 
be encouraged.